How can things not happen? It is impossible that if we would get filled, if we would have the fullness of God, it is impossible. We have accounts in the Bible, and I'm not saying God's going to do this today. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Where a man of God's shadow touched people, and they were healed. That's being filled, I'm telling you. When it runs over into your shadow, that's the fullness of God. We have accounts of men of God who would take a hanky and give it to you and you take it to somebody who's sick and they would be healed. That's the fullness of God when it comes out in the hanky. Same God. Same kind of people as they were. Nothing has changed except the church. We have changed. And I don't know how many of you think this, believe this, ever believed this, ever thought this, or were taught this, or whatever. But it's been prevalent that that was for then, this is for now. That all ended at, with the death of, of the last disciple, or whatever. But it's not in the book. You can't preach that. You can't make that statement. You can't put that out there as the truth of the gospel if it's not in the book. That's somebody's idea. And, and I've said this uh, probably a thousand times, and I'll keep saying it. If you can show it to me in the book, then I'll believe it. But I won't find any scripture that says, and at this time, all the gifts ceased. All the miracles ceased. This will never happen anymore. You can't show it to me because it is not in here. We have gotten away from it but that doesn't stop God's ability. That doesn't stop what God intended. That doesn't stop what the church is supposed to do. And to know the love of Christ with path of knowledge that ye might be filled with all of the fullness of God. <clears throat> now what's this got to do with what I started out with? Without a vision, people perish. If we get that vision, then we accomplish the other vision. We have to be able to see ourselves as the people of God who do this, who are filled with the fullness of God, who are strengthened in the inner man with the strength of God, who understand the height and the breadth and the depth of God. We have to be able to vision that first and get ourselves to that point first before we can go and do the other. As I said, you can have all the visions you want, but unless you do something about it, nothing's going to happen. You can sit and think about it, you can picture it, you can imagine it, you can have it in glorious technicolor, but nothing is going to happen until we are empowered, uh, until we are enabled. And before we're going to get empowered, and before we're going to get enabled, we have to get the vision. What is it to get a vision? It's to see what it is that God can accomplish. It's to see what it is that we desire for God to accomplish. That's what it is, to get that vision. But what is it that I want God to accomplish? I want him to fill you to overflowing. I want him to dump it on you. I want him to pour it out in barrels. I want him to get it on you uh, so much that you can't contain yourself. That's my vision. That's what I'm crying out for. That's what I'm praying for. Because if that happens, then the main vision can happen. People can be saved. People can be delivered. People can be set free. Uh, Satan can be put on the wrong. Strongholds can be torn down. Uh, but first, we have to be a people that are capable of doing that. And we can't be that people uh, until we get this in us, until we get to this point. And we're not going to get to this point unless you see yourself at that place. you got to get the vision. You got to get the vision. And listen, I know this is a big one and a hard one to overcome. We got to get away from this. God might do it. The Bible said God will do it. We got to get away from this. I hope He will. The Bible said I can know He will. We got to get away from this thing where I'm not good enough. Nobody's good enough. But because of Christ's righteousness, God will enable us. 
Well, you might go for them, but not for me. God is no respecter of persons. I know how the human mind raises up and brings up all these kind of things. But we've got to defeat that flesh. We've got to put that flesh down, those thoughts down. And when they rise up, quote scripture to them. God said he will. God said he is able. God said I can. God said I can do this. I can do that. There's nothing impossible with me. We've got to get a hold of that. Because if we have doubts... We don't get nothing. What does James say? The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Don't let him think he's going to get anything. What is a double-minded man? The man that says, I know God can, but will he? That's double-minded. We have to know. Uh, back to that message I preached on great faith. That's great faith. Like that centurion. He said to Jesus, I don't got to see anything. You said it. I know it. That's where we've got to be. Mm -hmm. He said it. We got to know it. And if we do, we will be rewarded like that centurion was rewarded. Because he had great faith, he received a great reward. It's the same with us. And I want to go on here just a little bit. And it says, now unto him that is able to do. This is what I wanted to get to. Unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. I got an imagination. And I've told you some of the stuff I've been envisioning and thinking about. And you have no idea what I see you doing. And I can't even imagine what God can do with you. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above anything I can come up with. Anything I can imagine. Anything I can think of. And how does he do that? What's that say? According to what? The power in us. It's got to be in us. And that backs up to everything I was saying. We've got to be strengthened in the inner man. We have to get that knowledge of God within us, that wisdom of God within us. We have to understand all these things. We have to have that, that faith, uh, that comprehension. All those things have to be in us. And it leads to that last thing that I read there, the fullness of God. And then when we have that fullness of God, He will do exceedingly, abundantly above anything that we can imagine. Anything that we can dream of. Anything that we can come up with. He will do it. Whether it's my flesh, whether it's Satan, I don't know. But when I preach these kind of messages, hey, it keeps popping in my head. They're thinking that you're going to be like one of them guys on TV where you just whoosh and everybody falls down and stuff like that. That's not what I'm talking about. That's right. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what the Word really says. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says that if I believe, that I can do these things. I can lay hands on people. I can cast out demons. I can tear down strongholds. The Bible says that I can. And yes, I do believe that a modern day child of God living in this world today, uh, and though we got modern, and though we got sophisticated, and though we got to where we think we're smart, I believe that they can do everything that those disciples did. I believe that because the Word says that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. I don't believe it because I see it because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in my life. Uh, maybe you, I've experienced a few things, a little thing here and a little thing there, but none of this. And it's sad. How did the church end up like this? Weak and powerless and wishy-washy and lukewarm and scared of their own shadow. How did we end up like this? This is who we're supposed to be. Filled with all the fullness of God. Strengthened by God in the inner man. So that we are at a point where God will do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you can imagine. How did we end up like this? This, this is my personal thing. And if it's offensive or it upsets you, please tell me and we'll talk about it. 
Unless we are like that, I don't think we're truly the church that Christ built on the rock. I really don't. And I know I say this. I say a lot of things over and over, I know. And I, I'll keep doing the phone God tells me to do it. But he said, on this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look around. Satan's prevailing. Satan's prevailing. All you got to do, I was going to say, watch the news, do this, do that. You don't even have to do that. Just turn around and look. Satan's prevailing. He's got people out of church, out in the world, in false churches, sitting under false teaching, believing false doctrine. He's prevailing. But Jesus said the church that he built, the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. So we're not the church he intended for us to be. And we're not going to be until we get a hold of these things. I'm telling you, uh, child of God, we need to understand something. And then, again, it's a repeat. We are the repository of the power of God on earth. Do we understand that? This is where God left his power in the church that he purchased with his blood. We are that church. We are that repository. We are the one. Listen, Jesus talks in one place where they said about him, well, you cast out demons by the Beelzebub. And, and he talked to them about if Satan were against Satan, then the house couldn't stand. But then the thing that he said was, you can't go and rob a strong man's house unless a stronger than he comes along. Who's the stronger? It's the Holy Spirit that indwells us. So what he's telling us is we can take Satan's stuff. We can run him off. We can take back what we've allowed him to steal. If the stronger man is in us, he can bind that one and we can conquer and we can win. But that only happens when we become strong in the spirit, in the power of God that dwells in us. I'm going to read this one more time. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. It doesn't say according to the power that we pray down. It doesn't say according to the power that Brother Hoosie wants to contain. The power that lives in us, that dwells in us. It is the power that is us that enables him to do exceeding abundantly above anything we can ask, do, or think, or imagine. That's what we need to understand. Unless the power is in us, he's not going to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we can ask or imagine. It's according to the power in us. That's how he works. That's how he moves. That's how he will do it. It's through us. He has chosen to put his spirit in us and work through us. So these things that he does have to come through the conduit. We are the conduit. That's how God chose to set it up. That's how he chose to work. And that's how he will work. <coughs> Back in the Old Testament, you can read where the spirit came on people. Samson. The spirit would come on him and he could do amazing things. Uh, but it's different now. Now the Spirit comes into us, indwells us, and that's how we do amazing things. But unless we are filled with it, unless we have the fullness of God, it doesn't happen. It won't happen. And again, uh, uh, the Scripture itself, it is according to the power that works in us. We need to begin to understand and to begin to see ourselves as children of God. The children of God are powerful. The children of God are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds. The children of God are more than conquerors. The children of God, have, God has said there's nothing impossible to them. They can tread on serpents. They can tread on scorpions over all the power of the enemy. He said about the children of God, Jesus said, uh, the things that I do will you do also in greater things than these. All these things were said about the children of God. How many of these things do we see happening? We need to get a 
individual. We need to see the church, which is us, as the children of God that are described in that book. We need to get that vision. We need to understand that is possible. Not only possible, it's what God wants of his children. It's what God wants of his church. And I know you, you may get tired of hearing these things over and over and over, but until we get it, nothing is going to happen. I don't know how you think or if you think about these things, but it is amazing to me. The things that Peter and Paul and John could do. Why could they do them? Because they had the fullness in them. I just imagine being that repository, having that fullness of God, being <coughs> strengthened in my inner self like they were. What could you do for God? What difference could you make in your family, at work, with your acquaintances, in this community down here, wherever you go? We could really make a difference for God. In this world we live in, that's the only thing that's going to do it. It is so dark out there. It is so evil out there. It, it is it's wall to wall ungodliness and on our own we can't cut through that we've got to be filled we've got to be empowered we've got to have that fullness of God um, try to wrap up I started off by telling you I have a vision that's my vision that you're going to be those kind of people that this is going to be that kind of a church this is going to be a place where they're going to say God is in that place. I walked in there and I felt God. I walked in there and God changed me. I was bound by alcohol. I was bound by drugs. But God delivered me. I was lost. I was a sinner. I felt like I had no hope. But God saved me. That's the vision for this body of believers. I'm believing it. I am seeing it. But in order for it to happen, we've got to do something. You can't just sit and think about it and wish for it and hope for it. We have got to begin to go after it. How do we go after it? We ask God for it. We cry out to God. We show God we mean business. But we get down to business with God and really let him know that we are serious and that we are sincere. And I know I've said stuff like this before, and I'm going to say it again. It's not asking one or two times that if it don't happen, throw up your arms and walk away. You've got to persist. You've got to persist. You've got to persist. God wants to see that we mean business. How many times, and I'll use myself for an example, in my own prayer life, has he seen me come and ask for something, and if it didn't happen after I asked once, I quit asking. That don't show I mean business. We got to keep coming, and keep coming, and show God we're serious, and show God we're sincere, and everything I've been preaching over the last little while all ties into this. We've got to develop our faith. We have got to have a great Faith. We have got to know that God will and our prayer life has to be developed to the point where we can come and persist if we have to persist and break through and get through to God. And I'm going to tell you, this just might happen. It happened to Daniel. Your prayer might be interfered with. It might be hindered, but you can't quit. The more you pray, the stronger the answer will get and get to you. You've got to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. And you got to put the flesh down. We, we talked about that when we talked about fasting because that flesh is going to rise up and say, well, I hope God will do this. I think he might do that. We have got to know. And that goes along with that great faith, but not only that, defeating the flesh because the flesh will doubt. The flesh will question. The flesh will wonder. We have got to know that God said it and that makes it so. If we don't know that, without doubt, without wavering, without any kind of interference, then we're not going to get great things because that's not great faith. That vision, I, I, I fully expect, I believe in God, and I'm going to see it come to fruition. But if it is going to, 
We gotta make it happen.